Hi, how's everyone doing today? Good, how are you? Hi, hello. Doing all right. Um, Marina, do you know if uh, uh, Justin is going to be joining today? Um, I think he was planning to, but I don't know. Oh, I see him now. There he is. Okay. I, uh, sorry for the delay. I had an audio problem and had to restart. Who else are we expecting on, in this meeting? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I guess let's give it a couple of minutes and see who else joins. I'm going to go set up the notes. I think we can get started. I don't think anyone else is uh, joining today. Um, the uh, uh, What I kind of wanted to get done today was go over the pull request uh, um, and finalize that. Um, and uh, Marco, I think you've already taken a look at it. Um, Justin, have you had a chance to uh, review it and uh, uh, come up with some comments or feedback? Is this what uh, I was looking at last week or I just want to Make sure I'm talking about the same thing. Can you just post the link in chat so I can? Yep, I'll put the link in chat. It's the same one I added in some of the uh, uh, the reasoning, uh, like we discussed last week. Uh, so to clarify, so let me put this in the chat. Thanks, I'm pulling it up now.
Yeah, I do have a couple of questions I have when I'm looking through this. Um, mm -hmm. So one thing, um, okay, so you talk about the publisher and the deployer as different people. So the, the deployer is, I assume, the person who's actually just sort of consuming the containers. Like, if you know what I mean, like, you're, yeah, okay. And the publisher is the person who's actually creating the containers. Um, and then there's right. a, another party here that I think is implicit, which is sort of the person who's running the registry. Um, That's true. And I, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how relevant this is, but I'm just curious about one, a, a couple of things that, that come up when I start to think through them and what they are supposed to be trusted to do and what they're supposed to not be trusted to do more specifically. Because I, I think in your system, you want the, the publisher, like someone who is a publisher, which I noticed you have like the publisher admin and builder and signer. Um, you want them to do things like presumably control which which images are trusted. Um, is that correct? Um, so uh, what do you mean by which images are trusted, right? Uh, in the sense that there's two, there's two different definitions of trust here, right? Uh, one is the deployer saying, here are the different publishers I trust. Uh, if anything is signed by them, I will trust that software. And then there's the other uh, uh, component of trust where a publisher is saying, here are, the, uh, here are the containers or things that I have signed that I'm saying you can trust of having come from me, right? Um, so uh, which one of those are you, uh, are you referring to here? Um. I, I think they're both very related because I think the first one deals with who you trust and the second one deals with, as I understand what you're saying, so the second part deals with what the people who you trust say. Right. Um, and so in, in the end, I think the, like, I think the design you're in part arguing for, which I think is, uh, which as I uh, as I understand it, and uh, is um, that the publisher, like some set of people who are the publishers, are the people that um, the deployer who has picked those publishers has enabled to decide what um, container should be installed when when you know when the deployer goes to make a request in some so sense, yes, you right. know i don't know if uh, um is there a sense where it's not true so, so um, i think go ahead so, so from my perspective i think we we should uh split these scenarios a bit from two to two angles so you have the consumer part where you would like to know okay what are the signed images and and uh, what are the keys which i trust so i think that's somewhere covered uh, using these root keys which you can somehow whitelist uh, on on your uh, registry but on the other hand uh, that's the topic uh, we at philips are trying to resolve with notary v1 today is uh, how do we manage uh, which developer or which CI job is able to sign an image at which point in time. So let's say today I have a team of five people. Uh, one guy leaves the company, the other one moves to another department. Uh, in that case, um, we want to be uh, have the team be able to self-manage uh, the delegations for the given target repositories. But on the other hand, we also want to have control on um, 
creating target keys and removing target keys and, and, and doing things like key rotation. And that's more or less uh, a ad administrator kind of role. So let's say you start a new project. Uh, the first thing you will do is request for uh, a target signing key uh, uh, to this administrator team. They will create you this target key and on this target key, uh, you can create um, your delegations or remove delegations or, or replace your key with, with a new one. Uh, so that kind of things. And for this, we, we have this proof of concept. Um, Justin, you, you missed that uh, as you weren't in, in that meeting where I gave the demo. But, but it's uh, um, available open source. Um, it comes with a, with a small web interface to, to manage these kind of things. But I think in Notary V2, um, as far as I can see now in, in the um, design, uh, this is not, uh, not covered. Well, I think um, actually, if you look at uh, the hybrid signing use case and then the signing by build machines or dedicated machines, um, that does cover some of that, right? We're talking about the administrator creating a uh, a root key and then delegating access um, for uh, the, the the entity that's essentially being the signer, whether that's a developer, whether that's a build machine, to be able to actually get delegate keys that chain from the root. Um, so yeah. that's something. Yeah, I think we covered so, that. So, so maybe the. Um, um, uh, personas we we could make them more explicitly or, or elaborate a bit more on, on what the persona does and what what it means to make that more uh, explicit um, I think that's that's uh, uh, I, I can I can take a, a, an elaborating kind of like who can take on those different roles but I still don't think we've answered Justin's initial question um, which was around um, how are we determining which artifacts we are going to trust overall, right? Uh, I think Justin here, the way I was envisioning it is that, you know, you're essentially, like you called it, the deployer is trusting some entity to say, these artifacts are trusted, these artifacts are okay to run. And then it is up to the entity that's being trusted, and it's in this case, the publisher, um, to kind of manage uh, how they say here are here's here's the ones where we have signed and we 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 tr we, we want our our sort of like consumers to say they can trust this, uh, and then they have also mechanisms to say something that we have provided trust of before uh, is no longer trusted. Right. Um, I think at a very high level, that's kind of what uh, what we kind of envision. Um, but um, are there any gaps that you see there um, that that that's uh, uh, that you want to address? I mostly want, I think it would be helpful to be very explicit that this administrator party is not trusted, like the registry party, and to be clear about that part of the process, because actually I think the biggest concern that, that we have overall is, is that, um, that a party that has control over a registry can do things that are um, extremely damaging. And, and so, um, you know, I, I've heard some discussion and some, you know, like, oh, well, maybe the person goes in and clicks buttons in the registry but doesn't sign anything and this picks what this thing links to or something like that. And I, right. I think that's that obviously, um, you know, if, if what we're supposed to be having here is we're supposed to have the the publishers and the people at the organizations actually deciding what gets installed and and what's trustworthy, then then that, that those are kind of very different models than one where oh well I just trust the registry and and you know, I don't need to sign anything because if it comes from the registry, the registry is a good guy, which it isn't, isn't the model that Steve or anybody's proposing, but I think there's flavors of that that creep in in places. Yeah, I, so I, so I, 
I, I think that's that's also what I meant with we we should split more the 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 role of the consumer and the signer. So also in in the admin part, you have the admin part where you trust keys which are uh, derived from a from a given root or a given intermediate, where you can whitelist what what is the things we really trust. So that, that could be a subset of um, images from different registries. Um, and on the other hand, you have the part where you are managing who is able to sign the images for a given repository. Yeah, I think the part of the goal here was to completely remove the role of the registry in that trust component. Um, and I think that can be addressed by adding in a registry persona that says that here are the places where the registry uh, owner, if you will, gets involved. What does their role mean? What do they add and where are they required? Um, the way this was written right now, the only place where registries are getting involved is in validating uploads to the registry and saying that, uh, you know, when we're getting artifacts coming in tied to a developer identity, uh, you can validate and upload to the registry whether this actually was signed by the developer in question or not, or the publisher in question or not. Uh, but even then, uh, the, when those container images are being pulled down by the deployer, uh, they're essentially still able to revalidate that and that's happening independent of the registry, right? Um, so I think if I add in a registry persona uh, and kind of show the end-to-end -end workflow of like, you know, a container being signed, uh, getting uploaded and uh, getting pulled down and deployed and show sort of like what role each persona has there, I think that might address uh, some of the concerns I'm hearing because I think that is missing in clarity from the uh, the scenarios right now. I, I think that would be interesting. Yeah. I think that'd be helpful to see. Um, I have a couple of other little questions, but I don't want to kind of monopolize the the meeting here. But um, um, what, one I, I have. I those. Okay, like root revocation, um, which you say compromise a compromise root should not be needed in process to designate itself as revoked. Um, I don't really understand this well. Um, I, how does, okay, so, um, you've, you describe a way this could be done, which basically means you have to have a way to touch all of the clients, um, in like the second to last step. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, as I understand it, what you're really <clears throat> saying here is generate a new key, assign new metadata, and go to all your clients and tell them to update their key. Um, yeah, the part of where this comes in from is in Notary V1, uh, one of the big concerns is if your root is compromised, that root can itself then be used to rotate to a new version of the root. Uh, and so I think separating out like how you do re root re revocation from sort of like essentially other revocation uh, was one of the areas that we wanted to address in the Ray V2, right? Mm -hmm. um, with roots, it becomes tricky in the sense that there's really nothing else to sign off once your root is compromised. And at that point, it's really just a root rotation uh, and saying no longer trust the older root is the information you're trying to propagate at that point. So, so this is very interesting to me because um, it's it's almost like the features is a bug, and I can't quite figure this out. Why? Um, so, what you're saying is that you don't want the ability to rotate root, and the reason why you don't want that ability is that 
the attacker can rotate the root. But if the attacker, like, okay, so I, I just am trying to walk through like a hypothetical situation here, if that's okay. So let, let's say the attacker needs to have two things. They both need to have the root key and they need to have access to be able to serve content as, as though they are like a trusted source, like a registry or something. Does that mm -hmm. make sense so far? Okay, so yeah. they have those two things. Um, let's say they have those two things. Okay, so now you have two possible designs. Design one is, um, is the original tough uh, notary v1 design where they then can rotate the root. Okay, so then they rotate it to a new thing. They've gone, they've been able to compromise and do anything they want on, on any of the parties that trust that root key for that specific repository, which in notary v1 is a very local repository that only contains information. Um, you know, like it, it's, it's it's information for a small group of developers, not like like every repository that exists or something on mm -hmm. on Docker Hub. Okay, so so that's scenario one. So so they can take things over, install what they want, but um, and you don't have a way to rotate to get rid of that or to change that. Um, now, let's suppose that we use this other design where you don't have this root, this ability to do root rotation. Now, if you don't have the ability to rotate root, but the attacker has the root keys and the attacker has taken over the registry, then the attacker can still have the party control, like control and install any software they want. Um, and in both cases, you still have to go to all the clients and touch them to recover from this. So, right. I, I think, yep, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so I, I don't actually see what this, what benefit this gives you. So I think part of it is um, uh, the requirement to have to go to the clients to enforce that, right? So with an automated root rotation, I think there's a uh, there's a potential that the root that's like if the root is being used to kind of say here's how we're rotating it, uh, then the uh, the attacker can change the root, right? And then from that point forward, uh, you're automatically locked off from rotating the root yourself because you no longer have access to the new root that the attacker used to kind of like uh, sign uh, to do the rotation with, right? Um, so, in this of. scenario, like, sorry? Well, sort of, but I just want to ask a clarifying thing here. I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, mm -hmm. is the, but in, if you don't have the ability to rotate, then you always have to touch the clients, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I don't, what if you're always able to touch the clients, it isn't the, do, do you see, like, I, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm expressing my confusion well, but I'm like. Yeah, it, I think what I'm suggesting here is we have a different process to touch the client, right? Um, rather than having to go through the registry and rely on the root, um, I think what, what I'm uh, proposing here is that the clients have a mechanism to understand what the roots are. Uh, and this is not using the, 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 the keys that are being used for uh, signing the containers and images, right? So this would be kind of where I think the notary server morphs into. So if you think of notary server as being like a repository of keys that are trusted for different entities, uh, then you can essentially check the notary service to see what the latest set of trusted roots are. Uh, this way, if someone wants to, like, you know, say, like, here's a new set of roots that we want to use, they can upload that to notary server, 
Uh, and you can, your clients can check that to see what the new set of trusted groups are. So that allows you to do group rotation um, without having to use the, uh, the root as sort of like a, uh, as an authentication mechanism, if you will. So, okay. So you talk about the notary server doing this. So, or this notary service server, I want to make sure I'm saying this right. Does it, does it matter which way I name it? Yeah, I think this is, this, is, this is something that we can look into more in the design, but essentially where I, what, I'm, what I think comes out of this as a requirement is we need a component uh, that is telling you what the latest routes to trust are for, any publish, for, for a publisher um, without having to uh, use the keys themselves as, uh, as, as, as mechanisms for authentication. But, but how do you know who that party is and why is that party trusted? Um, well, why would you trust, uh, like you, you have to know who you are getting uh, software from in the first place, right? Like when you're saying I trust this party, uh, you know who it is that you're trusting, right? Uh, are you talking about like in a, in like a tough repository or are you talking about in just in general? Uh, in, in saying more in general. So like, you know, if we, if you think about the concept of like uh, a deployer saying, which publishers do I trust? Um, you would verify who that publisher is and, uh, you know, where they're, where potentially to get their key information from, right? Um, so this could be sort of like, you know, if you're saying like, I trust, let's say, uh, I don't know, let's say, let's make up a company. If I trust Acme, um, here's where I know Acme's like keys are published from. Uh, and here's where I'm going to go to get that key information because I trust Acme as a publisher then anything that I see signed with Acme's key, I can verify that it changed from their root. Right, but, but the reason why the CA system like does all this and works is, is because effectively a bunch of um, rules and regulations were written around what it means to be a CA and how to do things. And the CA system, because it has a lot of parties involved and has a lot of trust in those parties, has actually been a pretty big example in, in many cases of, of sort of like the trust system gone awry. So I, like, you know, the fact that you have 500 certificates like for different CAs all completely trusted by your browser is, 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 you know, not a, not a great situation given all the DigiNoter and other hacks that have happened in the past. But, but how would you, I, I like. I think I'd need to digest this, but it, to me, it it feels like you're taking and you're you're creating a new, very trusted party that is a like a third party. You you. I think the way you're talking about this is this is some. Is this a server that everybody sets up individually? Every individual party sets up a server that has these root keys. Um. I think that's one where we, yeah, we can dive more into sort of like how that is set up, right? Like that could be done in a combination of ways for, um, for publishers that have a strong notion of trust where it's kind of like, you know, hey, like I absolutely want to make sure that uh, no one else is able to kind of compromise me, like have like, you know, like, you know, like if you have someone, uh, you could set up this yourself and then this information yourself. Uh, on the flip side, like if you would want to kind of go down the CA model and say like, you know, I don't want to run the server myself, you could potentially like, you know, designate a third party to establish and share that trust for you, right? I think this really goes up to like each individual publisher determining what their trust boundary looks like. Um, if they want to establish this trust themselves, um, they can set up the service themselves versus if they want to designate some other party to vend this trust for them, um, they could use a third party to do that, right? But I think both models would potentially work there. So, so based on this uh, discussion, I, I have some more questions. Um, so, so let's say um, we have many notary servers and many of these notary servers uh, could be cloud, could be private ones. And uh, let's say uh, I would like to run a private server in, in my closed network environment. 
but I still want to be able to trust some of the images from Docker Hub uh, based on uh, trusting a root or trusting uh, some other level of certificate. So shouldn't there be also some something to administer uh, how your server uh, exchanges the uh, root certificate information with, with other notary servers? So you can basically build a swarm of servers where, where this information can be retrieved from. So my client only needs to connect with my particular notary server um, and then just propagates to, to different servers uh, to, to retrieve the, the information which is not stored locally. So I'm more talking about a distributed model where you see nowadays a lot of things are moving into these uh, these distributed models where, where the information is not on one server, but, but where it's just spread across uh, the cloud or the internet. So that way um, you can also keep the ownership, like, okay, who is owning what and, and, and who is so storing presents, what? That presents some risk in the sense that if you have a distributed model of trust where this information is propagating through, whenever you're doing a rotation, you also need to kind of make sure that uh, it's going through in a reliable manner to all of the, uh, uh, all of the distributed hosts and things like that, right? Yeah. Um, so I think having a central server makes more sense in the sense in, in, in terms of making sure that if you in, in, in the, in the regards of a key rotation or vacation, there's a central authority that you can essentially go and verify that information from for air gapped environments. Right. I think this is one of that. Uh, um, I have a section in the trust or configuration, which we can expand on. Um, the idea essentially would be, you can periodically check uh, if you want and pull in that information. Um, but you wouldn't get that sort of like, you know, immediate information if like a root revocation or something happened. Yeah. Um, it is so that like, you know, we could kind of come up with some kind of a notification mechanism that you could set up um, that tells you when to pull more information into your air gapped environments. Um, but I don't think that distributed model of trust, it, 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 it would end up becoming a lot more complicated to manage and make sure that uh, all, the, uh, all the information gets updated. Yeah, so the, in that situation, you would need a secure, trusted uh, synchronization protocol or something like that. Not sure how that would look like, but that, that would be definitely something that, that you would require. But um, let, let's say if we stick with, with, um, with the central server, uh, I foresee one, one, one issue there that's with some of these big enterprises, uh, even even in some of, of our own products or, or things which, which are deployed at hospitals, we simply uh, are not allowed to do a network connection outside of the trust and network and stuff like that. It's It sounds crazy, but uh, still 2020, this is the case. And let's say these these projects, some of them, they are running Docker containers, but the way they are running them, it's, it's crazy. They, Instead of depending on an external registry, they uh, make zip archives of the uh, Docker image. They make checksums for those things. They um, transfer those zip files, including the checksums to a system where someone manually verifies the checksums and then uh, imports the Docker images into the internal Docker registry simply because we are not allowed to push internally into their registry. So those kind of use cases, if, if we would like to get those people on board, there, there needs to be some, some kind of mechanism where you can still have your own server and still have a way to synchronize some, some things. And so this I is a very extreme use case, I, I know, but uh, I, I'm not even sure if we, if you would even like to support this kind of things. But um, maybe that's something uh, we should also give a thought because uh, at the moment with Notary V1, what, what I see with most people is that they, they find it difficult, difficult to understand, difficult to manage. Um, with all the constraints they are also getting from, from clients, uh, uh, like I just explained. 
um, but there are also use cases where where it is of course is, is not applicable where it's where it's a lot more straightforward and yeah more cloud agnostic so there is a workaround that would currently work in that sense that you don't necessarily need to go to uh, a server to get the keys. Um, you can also configure the keys yourself, right? So in an air-gapped environment, one of the things you could do is you could look at what keys are trusted and configure them yourself. Um, but that is a at a point uh, sort of trust, right? Like you'd have to go back and update that at some point. I think in a true air-gapped environment where you don't have that network connectivity, you're going to need some manual process to upload that. Um, yep. And I think that, that, that at least the ability to kind of configure keys locally would give you that ability. Should we describe that as a, uh, as a persona who, who needs to be able to do those kind of things? Or is this really edge case? Um, so I'm, I'm I have a sure. section for them. Uh, I have a section for that in uh, on line 71. I will expand that to um, kind of show some of these because that was something that Steve talked about as well that we should kind of like clarify how air-gapped environments would build the trust and also the signing as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, from my perspective, I think it also makes sense if we uh, make um, a more specific split on the on the personas. Because now we have publisher admins, but I think you can even divide those admins on on, on different uh, use cases and maybe also different uh, uh, steps in the process. So let's say um, someone managing who is able to sign images uh, could potentially be someone with a different role than than someone who is managing uh, the the trust of uh, certificates, routes, and and things like that. I think making that a more explicit split uh, probably also eases the discussion, like uh, who is doing what and in which scenario would they do uh, these kind of actions. So the deployer in this case would be the person that's responsible for doing that. Let me look at the, um, I think um, probably another role that we need to add in here then is the trust store administrator. Um, so this is necessarily like the same way publishers split into an admin and a signer. Uh, deployer gets split into an admin who's uh, configuring the trust and a uh, developer actually running the, or a machine that's actually pulling the containers and running them. So. I think I can split deploy into two. So um, if I'm hearing the feedback on the personas, the, uh, this really should have five personas going forward, uh, an admin and a, uh, uh, a signer for publisher, uh, and for deployer, similarly, an admin and a deployer, uh, and then a, a role for the uh, registry owner. Yeah, yeah, I think that that would uh, allow bigger organizations to to scale the, um, the the work better and also yeah to to keep control on what is happening in in the organization and i think similarly for that scaling property it would be nice if the different personas can like delegate pieces of their role to other parties especially in like a very large organization so like you can have multiple people um in charge of a particular um, persona like it doesn't have to actually be a person or even a single key or anything yeah correct mm -hmm. so so in, in the POC we built today uh, we were now thinking to just uh, add some role-based access control with uh, with JWT tokens on, on the web interface part but um, of course the, the best use case would be that that all of this is managed uh, within TUF itself so so it's not depending on this web overlay which we now have as a poc but that it just is embedded in the tough framework uh, on, on like who is able to to add new delegations and who is able to remove them or who is able to rotate the, the certificates for for a given target if, if that could be embedded in tough in the signatures then it's more watertight than having an overlay solution that that builds this on top of it 
Um, I think those roles would make sense, but do we want to make that uh, distinction now or do we want to uh, work on the design and then figure out what the different roles are and come across that? I think uh, what I was attempting to do right now was at a very high level capture um, what the different use cases are um, so we can further find that into the design. And I think that design would spell out what the different uh, activities are. And then I think we can go more into like what the role distinctions there need to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. That definitely makes sense. I think it's, it's good to start with, you know, what's going to be done and then we can figure out how to make sure that all the right entities are trusted to do those things. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, so I think um, uh, what I'm going to do next step is uh, um, add in those additional personas, uh, add some more details to the trust for configuration use cases. Uh, but Justin, I wanted to go back and uh, I think uh, we still um, uh, we're on sort of like the root kind of uh, management piece. Um, uh, we didn't quite really settle on an answer there. Um, um, or what are sort of like some of the additional concerns that um, you think we should debate? Um, I'm still like, I still, when I try to kind of reason through some of this, especially around, um, around this like additional party for root revocation, I still I have a really hard time. Um, I think it's just I need to, to go through the scenarios because as I kind of map this out in my mind, it feels like this is just adding another party. Um, and and I, 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 you know, I'm going to probably go back through the recording for this and try to um, understand better where you're coming from. But I, I still have like from just a security trust standpoint, it, it feels like this just makes this design weaker um, than, than having the root do the rotation, like like you're adding in another party. Um, and and I'll, I'll try to have a, an easier way to reason about it, but like fundamentally the way I, the way I still see it is, is that the, the, the trust, like, you're you're just adding a party that you're that you're relying on even more, um, and you already were in trouble if the root was compromised. But now, if this other party that serves as the central, like uh, I don't know what you want to call them, but the uh, is that that's not the trust store, right? Or is it? No, it isn't. Uh, the truster essentially is the deployer configuring which keys uh, or which entities they trust. Um, so that's not the truster. Um, I think what, let's do this. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, clean up some of the language here. Um, if you want to take a look at it next week and then uh, come up on Friday with sort of like uh, where you see sort of like the concerns being, maybe we can address this in the next meeting. Maybe, okay. maybe maybe it also makes sense if we add a small diagram on on how these things would connect on on a high level to to get a better understanding to make sure that we are all on the same page. I can do that. I can throw in a diagram this weekend. Um, so uh, Justin, I'll 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 add in some of the comments we discussed today about the personas. I'll add in some diagrams. Uh, if next week you can take a look and uh, uh, then I think we can have a debate around uh, what the root management means and we can uh, probably settle that next. And, and maybe another thing is, do we need to decide that basically in, in this phase how the root management looks like or is it just enough to say, okay, we need some way of managing root and whether that will be uh, done via... Um, um, rotating or, or another way, uh, that's probably also more in detail design, right? Um, I think where it sits is uh, something we will want to cover now um, because it, it does kind of, I think, play into like how uh, routes are getting rotated, how when you're doing key management, where that's plugging into, 
Um, and if we are um, essentially coming up with a requirement for publishers to manage uh, a service, uh, that's something I think we should close in with the larger audience as well and say we're okay moving yeah. forward with that. Yeah. Um, so I think one I word agree. settling, uh, and then we can go back to the larger audience and see what the, what the consensus there is. Yep, I agree. Okay. Um, was there anything else? Uh, I didn't have any other. I think I've gotten some good feedback today as well for the next round of uh, changes on this doc. Yeah, I still need some some time. I'm sorry I didn't um, prepare well enough for this meeting. I still need some time to digest this, but I'll have more feedback uh, next week with you. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Mark or Marina, do you have any comments? Sorry, can you repeat that? I was asking, did you have any other comments? Uh, no, not from my side. Um, I... Um. I don't think so. I think I need to also read over this more carefully because I, I skimmed it before this, but I should read over it. And if I have anything else, I'll just leave comments. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and publish another uh, update by Monday morning. Uh, and then we can, um, if uh, once you guys get a chance to review, if you put in comments, I can also start looking at it for the Friday meeting. Uh, but next Friday, I'd like to close this and uh, uh, the Monday after just share uh, what we've agreed upon with the larger audience. Um, then we can start like focusing on the design aspect of this. Yeah, that's good. All right, uh, thank you all. Um, I think, thank you. Uh, Thanks, enjoy yeah, your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.